I'm standing in an untreated check, and again, just to kind of give you a reference, uh, we're about 28 days uh, after application here. Uh, of course, this is an untreated check that did not receive any treatment, and the pigweed or palmer amaranth that we're going to look at today uh, was about 18 inches uh, at the time of application. Just as a reminder, uh, what you're, gonna, you're not going to see a single program today that was completely effective. This is purely a salvage program. This is not what we recommend, but in a scenario where you were to encounter something like this, uh, we're going to show you some things that don't work and some things that potentially uh, will work today. Come along and let's take a look. A recommendation that we continue to make is to apply dicamba early and then follow that with a sequential application of glufosinate, especially when we're in a salvage situation such as we're seeing in this research. A question that I commonly get is, well, how soon after that dicamba application do we need to make that glufosinate application? If we actually make it soon after the dicamba application, can we get better control in that salvage situation than what we would if we were to wait later for instance, a couple of weeks and then make that application. And that's really what we're going to address here today in this video series. What you're looking at in this photo here is an application of dicamba that was made again on approximately 18 inch uh, Palmer amaranth that was subsequently followed with a 1x rate of glufosinate, 32 ounces of Liberty, and that application would have been made three hours following uh, the dicamba application. And what we notice here is we do not see a lot of dicamba or auxin symptomology on the soybeans because the glufosinate itself antagonized uh, the dicamba application. And overall, we see very poor control. As we move to this next photo and we look at three days following the dicamba application, we might see a somewhat slight improvement in control, but overall, again, less than acceptable uh, control when we delay that application to three days. Uh, the next photograph here, we're seeing a seven-day split between the dicamba application and the glufosinate application, and we see much better control with that seven-day versus the uh, earlier two photographs that we were see looking at. And now, as we move to the 14 day uh, between applications, we can see a very high level of control. And what we've noticed again is that 14 days, about a 12 to 14 day interval between the dicamba application and coming back with a subsequent glufosinate application, again at a 1x rate, really gives us the best opportunity to try to provide control where we were not effective with that first application or we had larger than labeled weed sizes with that first application. We're now looking at some greenhouse work as well as the fact that we've done some field work similar to this where we begin to look at what impact does dicamba have on Palmer amaranth as well as sometimes even 2,4-D would have on Palmer amaranth following the application. And what we're showing in this photograph is we have different times following the application and these are photographs that ultimately show that we reduce the surface area or the ground cover that's going to be associated with those Palmer amaranth plants following an application of dicamba. And here we see time zero in the upper left. We have 180 minutes on the upper right, uh, lower left 240 minutes, and at 1,000 minutes uh, we see that we have better than a 50% reduction in ground cover. And the importance of this is if you were to come back in with a herbicide and try to control this Palmer amaranth at a few days after the initial dicamba application, the ground cover there that's going to be available from a Palmer amaranth standpoint to intercept that herbicide is much reduced. And in doing so, we're really not going to see optimum activity out of the subsequent herbicide. And hence, that's the reason that we talk about actually trying to delay that application to 12 or 14 days following the dicamba application and that's going to, it's going to basically give that plant an opportunity to begin to exhume some uh, new growth and in doing so better spray interception, better activity out of uh, the contact herbicide one such as glufosinate. 
In summary today, as we take a look at the auxin herbicides, an application of one of the auxin herbicides, such as 2,4-D or dicamba, generally re results in a rapid reduction in leaf area. And when doing so, following that, soon after application, three hours, four hours, maybe even three days or even seven days, with a contact herbicide like glufosinate really is not going to be the best way of optimizing that system. You may sit and think, well, I'm using two effective modes of action. But going on and extending that to about 12 to 14 days where you may begin to get a little bit of regrowth from that auxin herbicide and you come back in with a glufosinate application is a very effective means of trying to salvage control of large pigweed. No, we may not control all of it, but by far our research has shown in a salvage situation, splitting those applications approximately two weeks apart if we're not able to mix those, that has been the most effective means of controlling large pigweed. Hey, I appreciate you being with us today and I look forward to seeing you in our next episode of In the Weeds.